morning it's saturday and it is sunny for once it's not been sunny for so long so i'm so happy that it has come out on a weekend and today is a very fun day we are heading to hay on y in hereford which is known as the world's first book town so if you're a book fan this is gonna be a vlog for you i have never been before i am so buzzing to go i have really been getting into reading i've always been into reading i love reading so much ever since i could read i did read and I've always loved it but you know if, if you read you'll understand you go through peaks of peaks and troughs of when you kind of read loads and then you don't read for ages and then you read loads again so I'm currently in a read loads again moment so the best place to go when you're in that kind of moment is the world's first book town why not I've seen a lot of videos about it online and I just really want to go it's not too far from us it's 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 a bit of a drive it's a bit of a drive i won't lie so we've got up a little bit early i'm just waiting for cams to have a shower and get ready so that we can go and explore so i thought why not take you along with me i'm sure there's going to be a few of you that have always wanted to go or have heard of it or maybe even haven't heard of it but here you go here it is the world's first book town in the uk I mean, it's the world's first, but the world's first book town is in the UK. How exciting is that? <laughs> Complete side note, nothing to do with books. I don't know if I've mentioned on the vlogs before, but I am growing, they've upset my windowsill, I'm growing cucumelons, which are cucumber melons. Apparently they taste like lime. Anyway, I picked this up in Sainsbury's for, I think it was like £1.40 because they were reducing it down really cheaply. And they're growing! Look how cute they are! So yeah, I'm really excited to see how they turn out. I do feel like they're a little overcrowded there. But I did space them out when I planted them, but obviously not very well. Um, so hopefully they don't upset each other, but we might have to transfer them to a bigger pot when they get a little bit older. But I'm super happy. I feel like a proud mum. We've arrived! And we initially thought it was going to be quiet, but it's actually really busy. Actually, this bit of the car park's not too far. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to grab something to eat because that was quite a long journey and I'm really hungry now. I think Camps is hungry as well, so we're going to grab a little bit of something to eat. But it looks so sweet. We drove through a little bit of it to get to the car park and it's so cute! At the Hay Craft Centre. This looks fun. Feels like we're in Glastonbury. Wishing well. Fudge shop. Oh, I see a sign for a cafe. This is so sweet. We're on a mission to try and find a cute cafe. It's like a really good pasty. Yes. And uh, look at that. Um, yeah, tell me oh. uh, this. Potentially found our cafe spot in a castle. Brunch and lunch, that'll do. Isn't it? <laughs> Although it's not sunny, it's definitely warm. Look at that view! <gasps> and then they have a little honesty bookshop. How cute is that? So many books, how am I going to choose one? So we've actually gone to a different cafe because we decided, we were just, I don't know, we didn't fancy either the castle, so we are at the Cozy Cafe, which is all of a crepe and a mocha and Cameron's on a beer because why not as a Saturday? <laughs> Just had a mocha and I've got a tomato and spinach and something else. Crepe? I've never had a savoury crepe before, so I'm really excited. This looks amazing. Get in my Okay, we are fed, we are coffeed, we are now ready to go into some bookshops. Shall we shall we just dive into this one? Yeah, let's 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 dive in. Oh, that's cute. Fair. So the uh Oh wow. So the mission today is to get Nadine a book. That looks like a really cool one. Oh, I might just end up writing a book for the
that really. That tickles my brain. The colour. These are the little ladybug books. Oh, they are. Did you used to have these at the kids? Yeah. Read it yourself. That's very cute. Patrick Potter. I spotted the first book I'd love to buy. It was a Peter Pan book um, until I realised it was £700, so it was probably quite a special book. Uh, best believe I popped it down very quickly and thought, don't ruin the book. Come to this little homeware shop. It's very French. Oh, I love that mug. Oh, stop it. It's a little peach. That's so cute. Look at those big blocks of soap. Is that oh, yeah. It looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Savon de Marseille. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Was that your French accent? Yeah. <laughs> How cute is that, Cams? What did you put there? Um, a little flower from the garden. I really like that little apple. A little daisy. Like a little fez. <clears throat> they are very sweet. Oh, Twenty-five pounds. Okay, they're so sweet. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, I actually really like that painting. It's very I chateau. Like they're made from like the original whale blubber. Is that what That's soap what was made from? Yeah, whale blubber. Oh, really? Yeah. Who just looks at a whale and goes, oh, tell you what, that would be good for cleaning yourself with. Who does that? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. This is so pretty. Wow. Bookshop number two. The Clock Tower books. This looks fun. The Betrayal of Thomas, Thomas True. Oh wow. That one's really pretty. The Fables of Aesop. I've heard of that before. They're quite um, famous. <laughs> This is quite a mix of old and new, isn't it? Architecture. Oh. Gardens. Some of these are just insane. Look at the size of it. History of Dorset. Wow. That's pretty. What are they? The, the um, town pieces. Spin the coin, like what the coin would look like. Look how pretty these notepads are. I do love a notepad, I won't lie. Well, guide. Oh, this one's so pretty. Bought my first book. I told myself I was gonna get one, but I feel like I might get more. So I bought a British folklore book. It's made by the National Trust, and it's about pixies and giants and all that folklore stuff, which is so up my street. So really excited. But I do want to get a second-hand book as well because this one's new. So I want to get like an old, like Sherlock Holmes or something. I think would be really cool. Come to the little clock tower. Should we go to the farmers market? Welsh Lavender. Let's have a little look in here. I think that would be a fun book to read. Oh, little farmer's berries. That's cute. Now at the, I don't know, millionth and one bookshop. Plants. Oh, wow. Oh, it smells like coffee. This is cute. choose from I don't know how people choose they all just look so interesting fun mm -hmm. wow 
And they um oh look at that little chappy. Goblin. His tongue out. Yeah. Tales from Pickwick. When is it printed? 1883. It's wow. Oh, I can't read. <laughs> it's insane. That oh they are very pretty. Okay. Another bookshop. Oh gosh, you made me jump. Yeah. Let's go in this one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, can't touch these ones. Just fair enough. Have you seen this post box? <laughs> it's golden and has a knitted seagull on it. That is brilliant. We're at the last bookshop. We tried to save the best till last. It's the Hay Cinema Bookshop. So basically they've converted a whole cinema into a bookshop and I think it's gonna be very large. All books a pound each. Ooh. We have bought nods a book, we have been successful. I think we're pretty much done now. And we are now home. Man, that was a long drive. I am pooped. We did stop and have a McDonald's on the way back because we were really hungry by the time we got to where there was a McDonald's. So we have one. Such a lovely day. I absolutely love Hay on the Y. I would go there again and again and again. It was such a lovely atmosphere. It was incredibly busy, but it didn't feel busy. So the car park was full and there were people everywhere, but it was a calm, it wasn't like if you go to the center of a city and it's bustling and it's busy and it's stressful. It was a calm, nice busy. So the shops weren't too busy that you couldn't move at all. And it was just calm and quiet. It wasn't like busy and hectic. And it was such a nice vibe. Everyone was just bootling around looking at books. I absolutely loved it. But it definitely was exhausting. I think I'd have to go a couple more times just to see kind of bits and bobs that I'd maybe missed. I thought I would show you what I picked up while we're here. As you can tell, I'm sat by my bookshelf because it's just fitting, isn't it? I have pretty sure I've shown this in the vlogs, but I just, I love this piece of, piece of work. <laughs> this piece of furniture so much. I don't think I've ever shown inside, but I should not be buying more books because as you can see here, this, I don't know if I can, oh, I can't open it while I'm sat down. There we is. This here are all the books I have recently bought in the last month or so. I'm talking like... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 books that I've recently bought, all from like the car boot sale and the charity shop, so I've probably only spent about 15 quid in there, so it's not like crazy. Um, but then, that's, so that are my recent purchases, and in here <laughs> are the books that I've had probably about for so long, and none of these books I have read. These are all my to-be-read books. I am one of these people, unless it's a work of art, which I don't really find a lot of my books are. I think I have one Alice in Wonderland book that is kind of pretty and I've never read, but I will keep. But I never read a book twice. I can't do it. I don't know how that works because a movie I can watch over and over and over and over again. I will not get bored of the same movie. I will love it. I'll obsess with it and I will watch it over and over as comfort. But a book, I've just never ever wanted to read 
a book again which is really bizarre like i have so many books that i've absolutely loved like the hunger games divergent water for elephants the night circus all of those books absolutely loved them beautiful stories have never once thought about reading them again which is really weird i don't know i know some people can reread books over and over again and just love them i find it boring i don't know why i'm just like i've read this i could read another book same with the movie I, it should be the same with the movie it should be why am i watching this again when i could watch something new anyway that's just how it works for books so anyway i've got this massive pile of to be read um but i'm adding to it because you can't go to the world's first book town with a shirt we can't go to the world's first book town and not buy a book can we just be rude so first let's go with the book that i bought first in this lovely paper bag this was from the literature flipping heck i can't talk i find talking so hard sometimes it's because my brain's going faster than my mouth. The Literature Laboratory. Hey, on, I still can't say it. Literature. Lit. Oh, that's not possible to say. Literature Laboratory. Hey, on why? Read well, live well, be well. Too flipping right. This one is one I will keep. I won't sell on. So once I've read it, it will stay in the bookshelf because look how stunning it is. It's just beautiful. It is actually a National Trust book. And it is a treasury of British folklore, maples, mandrakes and mistletoe. So it is an entertaining and an engrossing collection of British customs, superstitions, legends, past and present. Which I think is amazing. That is so up my street. So discover a world of Cornish pixies and stone circles of slumbering giants and shape-shifting river spirits of feasting, straw bears and maple dances. Learn how a green frog can be used to open lock. Used to be... Learn how a green frog can be used to open locks, how hanging trousers from the foot of a bed can ward off fairy visits, and why you shouldn't get married in May. Author Dee Dee Cheney is co-founder of Folklore Thursday, a hugely successful online folklore magazine. In this book, she reveals how Britain's rich folklore still shapes our lives and where you can go and see it in action. That was hard for me to read. Um, so basically, I grew up in Cornwall, and I was I was born in Kent, and then I moved down to Cornwall with my family, and we stayed there until I was fourteen. I don't like to say I'm Cornish because I'm not. I am not the biggest fan of Cornwall. I might have mentioned it before. If I haven't, I don't like it. I think growing up there when you're younger and you're living in the middle, I always say the coast is beautiful, but in the middle of Cornwall, it's just. Uh, and when you live there as a kid there's not a lot to do you have to go like an hour to Plymouth or like the beach life's fun but if you don't live on the beach you still have to drive to the beach so obviously you go when your family goes not when you're you know you're young so you can't just bootle on down to the, the beach and it's miserable cold and pretty closed in the winter and then it's ram packed full of tourists in the summer so it's just a bit rubbish and i do find that cornish people aren't the friendliest of people they're not the warmest but regardless i still had a brilliant childhood i grew up in a forest so we had a yeah we lived in like a valley so you had kind of big christmas tree pine tree forest trees on one side and then like normal english trees on another so it was like two different worlds and my whole life i was brought up by like believing fairies and pixies and all sorts were real. I absolutely love that kind of stuff. My mum was a big believer in kind of believe the magic is real. So if, if you believe it's the magic will happen. So like Father Christmas, we had, I had birthday fairy. So obviously everyone, a lot of people have Father Christmas. But for my birthday, I would have, I would leave a little something. I don't even think I'd leave anything out, but the fairies would always bring something. So I remember one year, quite often it would be a book about fairies or a book about some sort of mystical creature, dragons, absolutely loved dragons as a kid. I had a massive dragon puppet that was like a big arm puppet. I I think I've still got him somewhere. I think my mum has him in the loft. Um, but yeah, one year I think I got given wooden pencils. So I know pencils are made out of wood, but they were the ones that looked like tree, like tree branches. And it was just like the mystical fairiest thing. So this book really kind of spoke to me because I was like, I just want to actually learn about the proper folklore. Because to me, I just read, you know, those rainbow fairy books. There was about like 300, like millions of those fairy books. Are they called rainbow fairies? And they had the goblins, like the ice, icely goblins. And then there was a different fairy for like June, January, apples. You know, please tell me someone else can remember that. I wonder if I can Google it. Because I 
think they are called the Rainbow Fairies. Rainbow Magic, that's what they were called. These ones, is that gonna focus? Do you remember these? <laughs> so it was, I, I grew up on those. So that was my life. I absolutely loved fairies and books and stuff. So this is like the adult version of like understanding the actual folklore rather than just unicorns and fairies. <laughs> so this one I bought because I was like, I really want to learn about it. Big spiel, wow. And then we went in to Man Books, Lion's Hay. Lion's, Man. when it's in a circle, you never know where to start. <laughs> so it's it's that one. Um, this one was my favourite bookshop. I think, no, these were, this was my favourite. This was my second favourite. This one was very new books, kind of folklore, magic -y, magically, kind of beautiful um, notebooks. I think I took a video of the note, the, uh, I'm her. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying Vic? Um, I took a video of the lion notebook. You'll remember it. You've seen it. You'll remember it. So that was really lovely. And then this one was full of books, but there was a mixture of old and new. So you had like the older books that were on the shelf and then piles of new books on the floor. And they were all a lot cheaper than new, like new prices. So I picked up a couple that I think this one is trending on TikTok. I'm pretty sure. So it's called These Violent Delights. And I'm sure it's it's trending. I've seen this, I think. Anyway, it was £4.95 instead of £9.99, so I think that was quite good. It's half price, basically. Um, this is about a gang in Shanghai, which I think is really cool to read. And then I picked up this one. It's called The Botanist's Daughter. This is something I wouldn't usually pick up and read, and it's about... It's got two different, and there were quite a few. I think it must have been from the same author, but I didn't check. There are two kind of point of views. You've got back in the day, so 1886, and then you've got present day. So I guess the two stories align, which I think is really cool. I love reading present day stuff. I don't particularly like historical stuff, unless it's got a link to present day. So if you're like got present day characters, and then you go back in time, so like in Vampire Diaries, they go back in time. Um, and But it's your present day characters back in the day. I just love that that aesthetic but this one sounds really good so this is the botanist's daughter it just sounded like something i wouldn't usually pick up but i think i really will enjoy and it's such a pretty cover as well and then finally oh no i also picked up something else which i think i may have lost no <gasps> got it this is probably my favorite purchase this is gonna go behind me a <laughs> fuzzy bee how cute this is a fuzzy bee that I'm going to put in my cupboard along with my books and it's going to remind me of Hey On Why. This was £1.50. I just thought it was the cutest little thing. That's going to go. We got really scared that I lost it then. Uh, yeah, that was in my paper bag. And then finally, we went into the cinema as I filmed. <laughs> as you saw, it was overwhelming and insane. That's why we left it till last. And I picked up a book for Nadine. And this one is one you've probably all heard of. It's a Harlan Coben called Missing You. I don't think she's read this one. I hope not. And that was 3 99 And it's brand new completely brand new so instead of it being 8 99 it was 3 99 which I thought was really really good um and yeah I'm hoping Nadine will like it I think she likes those kind of thriller things so perfect one for her and it came with a little bookmark of the cinema so that's the cinema bookshop cute and those are all the books that I got I didn't go crazy I bought three for myself one for a friend I think that's good enough isn't it I think that's good that's the sensible I probably spent about 20 pounds which is okay that's fine <laughs> but now I am officially on a book buying ban I cannot be buying any more books until I've got through this lot because my bookstore is overfilling into my cupboard space however that is the kind of point of that because you're supposed to see the books and look pretty but I do a lot of those I probably won't keep after I've read them because they don't look aesthetic so we kind of want this vibe we want there's one book that's circulating online that looks beautiful and it's I think when the moon hatched so it's got a beautiful hardback cover and then when you take the sleeve off it's got something else on it got a map inside and I think it's about dragons so I'm really excited I want to get that one so I might have to treat myself to that I also would really like to get the courage to be disliked because that's going trending that is going viral as well and I'm pretty sure Lydia Millen has just read it as well which is quite interesting so I'd like to read that that's more of like a self-help book and I like a bit of fantasy that's not real life but yeah 
I think I'm probably going to leave this video here. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. If you've got this far, thank you so much. Please hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Drop a comment in the comment section about your favourite book and let me know if you've got any recommendations. If you've been to Hey On Why before and what you thought of it. And if you haven't, what are you doing? <laughs> if you haven't, I highly recommend it. It is stunning. I don't know. I think I'd probably want to stay up there next time because I'm pooped. That was such a long drive. I'm exhausted. But yeah, highly recommend. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love doing videos like this as always so yeah hopefully I think the next one will be potentially my London vlog because we're going to see Tom Holland in theatre <laughs> so excited about that um yeah we're going to see Tom Holland in theatre on Thursday so I'm going to try and vlog as much as I can of that I don't know if I'm going to get any of the actual show because I, I think it's illegal they send you quite a hefty email of like you can't enter with a bag you can't film if you film you'll be kicked out if you're late you won't be allowed it's just like Crikey, right? Um, but anyway, that'll be a fun vlog and that'll probably be the next one. So if you'd like to see that one, hit the subscribe and I will see you then. Bye.